question five highlight five objectives of an information system design so the first objective of any information system design is efficiency and effectiveness so it ensures that uh, uh, the the system design creates an efficient and, and, and effective solution so this will minimize uh, it will minimize any errors it will minimize any complaints or any bottlenecks that can come up or erupt at the end of the system development so that we have a system that is optimal and that is not redundant and operations are streamlined within the system so efficiency and effectiveness the second one is user friendly interface and user experience so designing an intuitive and user friendly interface is essential why because you see the systems will be used by users of different different level of knowledge or or, 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 or who are never some have never interacted with the system before some and uh, we call them novice users some have average knowledge some are also experts in these things so we must have a user friendly that uh, user friendly interface that is able to that each and every user at any level of expertise is able to interact with so this one this uh, this user friendly interface this, uh, focuses on creating a positive user experience uh, experience and then we have scalability and flexibility so the system design ensures that the system is able to, to change it's able to grow as the organization needs also changes over time you, you, you know that the organization will not be like static it will change it will grow so it should uh, this uh, the the system design should also be scalable to handle increased user uh, loads and other needs that arises we also have data integrity and security so information system design always emphasizes on data integrity and security why because the data that is stored in from in, in the information system should remain unchanged or anybody uh, any data that is stored here should not be accessed by any unauthorized persons so in this case sometimes we you employ data encryption access control and authentication mechanisms to ensure that this data is protected from unauthorized access the, the data should not be in any way manipulated and lastly we have integration and in interoperability so this design ensures that the, the new system is able to integrate freely with uh, with other components different components or, 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 or components that will be used when the system grow up when the system become bigger so the, because the organization also has its own technology ecosystem so with this system accommodate will it be in a position to also use other systems then the other question says explain five positive reasons why an organization may decide to replace an information system so this is a case where the organization is having a particular information system and they are changing it so the first reason will be technological or obsolescence where the, the the system that is there has become obsolete technologically so why because maybe the technology has advanced or or it is now lagging behind so rapid advancement in technology can render this existing information system are outdated why because now maybe the new uh, softwares are in the market and the new hardware is in the market and they are not working or they cannot be integrated to the old system so now in this case it will necessitate replacing the system then scalability and growth maybe the existing uh, information system lacks scalability to accommodate the increasing data or the increasing volume of or load because the business have expanded or the organization has be, have, have expanded so because of lack of scalability and growth uh, the organization could decide to have a new system in place and also we can talk about changing business needs so maybe the organization need or objective have changed or have, the business have evolved so the system no longer supports the new requirement so in this case the business organization can consider replacing and allowing the organization to align its technology with the current need also we have inadequate functionality of features so if the current system it lacks some essential features or some essential 
uh, functionalities, then it will not meet the, the requirement, it will not meet the objective of the system or the organization. So in this case, again, the organization can consider replacing uh, the system altogether. Also, we have what we call security and compliance concern. If, if the system that is existing poses security risks, it poses, it exposes organization to potential data breaches, maybe things like cyber attacks or this. So replacing it could be the better option. Then question five says, enumerate five reasons why memory management is required in a computer system. So we say that memory management is a technique that is offered by the operating system. And in this case, the operating system is managing the primary memory because of this uh, uh, limited capacity. So one is resource allocation and utilization. So memory management is very essential. Why? Because it allocates and assigns memory space to various processes and applications. Because we say that in a multitasking or multiprogramming environment, the operating system or the CPU under several processes so which cannot all of them fit in the CPU at the same or the, the RAM at the same time so now it ensures that each program receives the required amount of memory and also it prevents uh, over, over allocation that could lead to system slowdown so we have also process isolation so memory management ensures that processes are worked on in isolation each process is operating in its own protected memory space. Although the memory is big, but the memory is segmented so that each process is able to work on a memory space. That's technology we call paging. So this one will prevent one, uh, one process from interfering or in another process. And this also we have what we call virtual memory implementation. So virtual memory is, uh, is a memory technique that allows the computer to use part of uh, of the hard disk and RAM. So the computer C processes uh, central processing unit will use hard disk as though it is part of, of the RAM. So this one helps the operator, uh, it helps the central processing unit to process maybe processes that are bigger than maybe the RAM. And also multitasking and multi-threading. So in multitasking environment, we say that multiple uh, application can run simultaneously. So in this in this in this type of environment, the memory management ensures that there's fair and efficient sharing of this memory and resources among these processes that are running. Then the next question says to Jenga Limited is in the process of developing a new information system. A few managers are reluctant to embrace the new information system. Identify the most suitable method of system changeover to apply in this above scenario. So in this case, some of the, uh, uh, of the employees are trying to, to resist or they, they do not want to the new development or the new technology or the new system that has been brought forward. So it means that maybe they are too much used to the old system. They are too much accustomed to the old systems that they find it difficult to, to move within to move with the new system. So in this case, what could be done is what we call pilot changeover. So this is this is where you implement the new information system step by step. You don't change the you don't just take away the old system and bring the new system all together once. So you roll it out slowly. So it involves implementing the new information system in a limited and controlled environment before rolling it out to the entire organization. So this one it will help small groups of managers or specific uh, department. For example, you could start it maybe in the accounts department, then you go to management slowly. You don't just change the entire system. So this allows for gradual transition. And also, these people can also address their concern and issues that may arise during this uh, systematic or slow implementation. And then, what are the advantages associated with this method, the pilot changeover? There's user involvement and feedback. Remember, these pilot groups, they, 
the departments that you started with are able to give feedback and insight about this new system usability. They are able to talk about the functionality and they, even if they encounter any problem or challenges, they are able to bring them forward. Then there is also reduced resistance as we have seen in this system. So because these small groups have been, uh, have been brought forward and they are the ones that are using it initially, so their resistance can be minimized. Also, we have incremental learning. So the pilot groups can gradually learn and adapt the new system, and therefore it will reduce the risk of overwhelming user with a sudden change, like you change it once. And also risk mitigation. Now, any user risk or any problem that arises during this phase, during this trial, can be addressed and resolved before the entire system is implemented. Remember, if any risk uh, come up when the entire system has been placed, put in place, it will involve maybe losing the entire data. Or it, it will involve a very big repercussion to the, to the company, to the organization.